Talented but torn, tremendously gifted but led a tumultuous life. She obviously had her demons. She burned twice as bright but burned out three times as fast. She is Amy Winehouse. They tried to make her go to rehab. She said no, no, no. She was going to do things her own way. And this is her story. Dun, dun. Amy came out in 2015. It was a documentary from director Asif Kapadia, who has done a lot of films. He did The Return that had Sarah Michelle Gellar in it that wasn't all that great, but I don't think anybody could have saved that. He also did films like Senna, The Warrior, Heart Too Hard to Win, Shrieking Patti Smith Noises. And yeah, this is the story of Amy Winehouse, who was born in September of 83 and died in July of 2011. And... I'm going to say right at the beginning that a couple reasons I decided to review this. One, Back to Black is coming out in just a little bit as I'm recording this. <laughs> and also, even not being the biggest Amy Winehouse fan while recognizing her vocal talent, I finally wanted to check this out. I finally wanted to give it a fair shake, give it a shot. And what I did know about her rise and fall and just her eventual you know, demise that was really, really tragic this reinforced a few things. One, she couldn't handle the fame, but she knew that she had the vocal talent. And she knew that she could, you know, perform in front of people, maybe not throngs and throngs of fans. And she wasn't able to handle the fame, but a lot of artists can't handle the fucking fame. And the tabloids just won't leave you the fuck alone. And she did spiral out of control. She had her demons. She was not perfect. I don't think she ever said she was perfect. She's been propped up on a fucking pedestal so goddamn high you can't even see the fucking bottom of it. By a lot of people that really did think that she was the queen of jazz. And she could have honestly had a longer career. But... Given the issues that she had, <clears throat> from stuff that happened early in her childhood, the fact that she had a bad home life, this did reinforce that her dad's a fucking motherfucking piece of shit, and I have nothing good to say about him. Fucking scumbag. Can't wait to see how they try to whitewash him and back to black. And sure, Amy had her drug, her alcohol stuff. She <clears throat> had obvious mental health issues. So... Even, again, somebody who's not the biggest fan of her. You can recognize that this was a troubled ute, as the kids say. And somebody that was very gifted. I mean, no doubt. Tremendous vocal talent. She got to do a duet with Tony fucking Bennett. Tony Bennett. You want to talk about somebody that's revered as far as a singer? Tremendous, tremendous talent. And there was even some nice footage. And, yeah, I'm going to skip around here a little bit because it's a documentary. And if you know how her life ended... This just gives you a little bit more insight, and then a lot more insight on some aspects. And it is a two-hour piece that does fly by. It was distributed by A24. But there's a piece near the end, and this obviously is going to contain spoilers, but it's a fucking documentary. You know how Amy Winehouse unfortunately did pass away at the age of 27. And I do remember that being shocking, but not so shocking, even as somebody that only paid attention to some of her career and then has, you know, checked out a few things since. Um... <clears throat> Will be interesting to see how Back to Black decides whitewash stuff and <clears throat> the music industry, the industry in general, taking advantage of a young person who did have vocal talent. Very, very good vocal talent. Had a lot of range, had a lot of soul in her, was an old soul, as people said. But the stuff with Tony Bennett I thought was really, really fucking moving. And the stuff with the friends. The friends really wanted to help her. There were people that wanted to help her. You eventually do have to, <clears throat> I guess, grow up and get the help yourself you have to admit that you have a problem and that's where you know the like the issue is that's like where the wide you know the wide issue is where it's like okay you're over here you need to get help <clears throat> you got to get over here to the people that want to help you and a lot of people don't think they have a problem and don't get me wrong amy winehouse is unfortunately just one of many 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 in the music industry in the entertainment industry in general that <clears throat> had a lot of issues that either completely destroyed them, you know, to the sense that they aren't, you know, the person they weren't, uh, they once were, or took their life early. I mean, we were Phoenix, or others and everything, or people in wrestling, or people in acting. So, she was born on September 14, 1983. I did not realize that she was that close to my age. I <clears throat> didn't put two and two together. I was born in January of 81, and I was like, 
I don't know even if she got clean if she still would be alive now, but she would have gotten a chance to maybe live a normal life. <laughs> she did uh, die on January, or <laughs> January, July 23rd, 2011. I did like how they had the archival footage, the home movies, uh, the interview footage, uh, voiceover, you know, interview footage from the various friends, various people. Again, dad's fucking scumbag. This is currently on HBO Max, or Max, rather, now, and <laughs> apparently soon. Every streaming service is just going to combine, and we're going to get Disney, Hulu, and Max in one thing. I pay for a lot of shit um, for people in the household, so I guess why the hell not? Why not do that? So, you have Amy, or the, uh, Mitch, or Mitchell, the father. You have Janice, the mother. Um, <clears throat> she had two other partners. There was an overriding, uh, or two boyfriends <clears throat> that she was with during the time that, you know, her and Blake were on again, off again. And Blake, I'm just going to say right now, not the most sympathetic individual either. One of the funniest lines was in the opening thing. Uh, no one wants to lick your slobbering lollipop. I love the way the British people talk. I also love this, the way they say the word can't. I can't say it on here because it's my favorite swear word, regardless of gender, color, or creed, but nevertheless. <clears throat> so... <clears throat> Alex, her older brother, you know, we, we get some good stuff here. I mean, it's chronologically, I don't want to say it's it, it's actually told pretty well. I'm not going to go into minute detail. But there was a guy named Nick that became her manager. This was pretty goddamn nice. Started in like G, uh, January or so of 2001 and kept a chronological thing of her rise to, you know, back to black, which was the big, big hit, even though she had had some hits before that. Um, she had a song or a poem book that she kind of turned into songs, <laughs> tragic stuff, stuff that happened in her family. Uh, the real hard one is coming up here in just a little bit and occasional sprinkles of the songs. So again, you don't have to be a big fan of Amy Winehouse to understand what the fuck she went through and what, you know, she was going through deep in her mind. <laughs> and she had her, her family, you know, eh, kind of issues there. I mean, I don't know about her relationship with her brother necessarily, but uh, Juliet and Lauren were friends of hers. And it was nice to hear from them. She was of Jewish descent, but she saw it more, she didn't see it as a religious thing. She saw it more as being about family and everything. And after her parents split, she was eight or nine or stuff like that. Um, she felt she could do what she wanted, but she always needed that fatherly figure and that kind of stuff. <laughs> One of the first guys she dated, or maybe the first guy just she got serious with, was an older guy. We see a little bit of him. Yeah, the issue of bulimia was one big thing, and you kind you definitely could see it. Um, and this is not a knock at all. I know people that have, and you know, still suffer from that stuff. And you just do what you can to support people. You don't knock them. Just say, hey, you know, I'm here for you, that kind of stuff. Even if it gets frustrating and you want to see them do better, you got they got to work through it in their head. They, they eventually got to work through it. Sometimes you got to kick them in the ass, but you don't want to kick them over the edge. Um, it hurt Amy that her dad wasn't there. And the death of her grandmother is what really hit me. And uh, Amy was older because that was like two. 2006 so she would have been 23 i was nine when my grandma passed away and it hurt me because partly it, the little side thing partly because we just lived a few miles away i distinctly remember the layout of the fucking house that kind of stuff sticks with you as a kid you lose somebody that you care about that much it's going to affect you with amy because of the relationship fractured or otherwise with her parents her grandmother being this guiding light this rock so to speak Yes, eventually people do pass away, but as she's rising to fame and everything, this is 2006, so she's just about to really explode. It gets worse um, when that happens. I mean, and again, I'm not saying she's an innocent victim, but she is somebody that absolutely was taken advantage of by some people. Now, there are some, you know, producers, and there was a guy, Salam, who was a producer who seemed like he had a pretty level head. I mean, I'm not saying maybe he didn't push her or do some stuff, but she she seemed to have a good uh, relationship with him. He seemed to be a bit of a calming influence. Uh, she got her, you know, she got some time in Camden. Um, 
I don't know enough about the UK layout to know if that's upscale or not. But that's when stuff started to really spiral, especially when she met this guy, Blake. You want to talk about two people that were destined to be together, but destined to destroy each other. It probably would be these. <clears throat> he did eventually break up with her to go back with his girlfriend, and she went back with her boyfriend. It was an on-again, off-again thing. The price of fame got bigger and harder for her to deal with. And look, a lot of people can't handle that price of fame. November 2005, <clears throat> um... People were trying, you know, the people that cared about her were trying to do a fucking intervention. You had the guy Nick, you had various others that talked about the fact they couldn't get her to go to rehab. The dad said she didn't need to go to rehab because the dad saw an opportunity to milk her fucking dry. At least that's my interpretation of the goddamn thing. Now, yes, you only get a, a small window to accomplish some fame, but still, you probably should fucking care more about your daughter's health and then maybe she can get back to it once she gets cleaner. Or maybe just record music in a studio, release it, and earn money some other way. Because some people have tremendous health. Some people are fucking geniuses and can't handle that shit. So, <clears throat> this poor girl, this poor goddamn girl, um... Once her grandmother passed away, she spiraled bad, really, really bad. Nick wanted to help her. I mean, really did want to help her. The Back to Black album was a huge hit, a huge hit to the point we had, you know, fucking album of the year from the Grammys. I mean, that's a big goddamn deal. The tabloid coverage, I do remember seeing a lot of it and was like, again, not being the biggest fan, I'm like, okay, you can get your jokes off, you can do your stuff. And I'm not saying I have made jokes in the past, I'm not saying I won't in the future, but you see this stuff and you're like, She's just one of many. Where tabloid coverage was absolutely nuts. It's fucking nuts. And then, you know, the media tour, <laughs> more spiraling, the drug usage, heroin, the massive amount of drinking, she had an overdose scare. Doctor says she has another seizure, she could fucking die. Yeah, we try to tend to avoid seizures. I mean, I know there are people that are prone to them because of medical conditions, and I'm not knocking that. But. A lot of people try to avoid that shit because it's something short-circuiting that you really kind of need to live. And no one could get her to get help, those that cared, and the dad basically just did a thing where he just used her fame to um, basically uh, gain some fame on his own. There was a point where they were at like some beach resort or whatever it was, and yeah, he was you know being a fucking slime ball there. A stupid motherfucker, and I hope he's having a goddamn horrible day and a horrible year. So, <clears throat> she she really did have the talent, but this was just really where things got bad. She won album of the year. Her closest friends couldn't help her. March of 2010, people were like, we gotta get her help. Blake uh, even got clean, but then pushed her away and everything because, yeah, there was a, even a point like before that where they were going to get some... <clears throat> drug rehab like you know like a couple's rehab and everything and that wouldn't work because you need to get people away from each other have them get clean on their own and then maybe put them back together or just don't fucking do that i mean it's not about being in love it's about basically being stuck in a fucking rut stuck in the middle with you as it were the duet with tony bennett was very very nice i really did enjoy that shit <laughs> she had health issues heart problems it basically, if she stopped drinking cold turkey, she could die. I believe that was one of the things, what it was. And if you weaned her off of it, maybe she could be okay. Her body got so dependent on it. And not just that, but the drugs too. They got absolutely insane. <clears throat> and she didn't want to do Back to Black um, anymore. She wanted <clears throat> to make music, but the fame was really eating at her. And I mean, there was even footage of that concert in Serbia. I forgot about that concert in Serbia because there's so much shit that has happened in, you know, the past number of years that I forgot just how much of a fiasco that was on multiple fronts. <clears throat> and she was in no condition to perform. She was put on another tour. <clears throat> um, she was done, done. <sighs> just like Everglow once said. Anybody that gets that as a deep cut for K-pop references. And at the end, she apologized, just saying sorry, sorry, sorry to her friends on the phone. Can you come see me the next day? Unfortunately, she died the next day. Alcohol poisoning, heart failure, all this stuff. It just... It's fucking sad. This, this poor girl that was obviously troubled and was no fucking saint was basically taken advantage of by some people. And 
Some, some. I'm not saying that there are horrible people throughout her entire life, because I believe there were people that legit tried to do stuff. But, yeah, Amy gets an A+. Plus. It is tough. I will never watch this film again, as tough as it is. But <clears throat> credit to Asif uh, Kapadia, who did a really, really good job with this. And it was nice to get the deep-cut archival footage, really good stuff. It gives you more of an appreciation for... The fact that fame can really cost you everything, literally everything in her case. That being said, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I'll see you soon.